and, were... And within, even within that brand, it's one skew of that brand. Right, right. Now, as a marketer, as a pay-per-click marketer, what you need to figure out is what are, what are the core benefits that every vendor is offering in order to get yourself in the running, but then what are the ones that people like Sharon and I, the hyper response is, that we're really looking for that we can't find so that you can be that one brand that stands out because there is only one brand of microwavable brown rice in, in, a, bowl, in a bowl in the right portion. Organic. That, organic that we look for. There is only one. Right. And my contention is that if you study your market well enough, you will find those points of differences to attract the hyper-responsive marketer. Point number three. Okay. Um, remind me what point number three is. Huge bullshit detectors. Um, <laughs> I think I actually said BS, but um, because hyper-responsives know the market so well, they also have the biggest BS detectors. So the implication is in your advertising, you need to link, you need to do your research, you need to be talking about real benefits, you need to address all the issues in, in the market, and you need to focus on the points of difference. But when you're constructing an emotional appeal, if you try and market with attitude, you try to market with emotion, and you don't link those emotions to real product features and real, real um, deliverable um, um, benefits, then you're going to come across as hypey. And hype is a nice word for bullshit. And um, uh, the hyper-responsive customer, because they know the market best, has the world's best BS detector in the market. So you're not going to get the um, hyper-responsive customer with hype. It sounds paradoxical. But hyper-responsive customers do not respond to hype. They respond to real points of benefits that have logical support. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Point number four about hyper-responsive marketing is to um, use hyper-responsive buying language. Sharon, what, what were you thinking when you, when you were first scanning the um, microwavable rice aisle or the rice cake aisle? What, what was going through your head that you might have been looking for? I'm looking for purity. I'm looking for something that's, you know, organic, all natural, has no gluten, uh, <clears throat> that um, is also easy to prepare. Yeah. Yeah. So that language right there is the type of language that goes in your pay-per-click advertising, that goes in your landing page and goes in your, your sales funnel. Because, um, first of all, it is buying language. It's what's going through the customer's head as they are proactively searching and ready to make a buying decision. It's not calling up someone, asking them if they're the primary grocery shopper or head of household, you know, head of, head of grocery shopping in the household, um, whether, they, whether they ever buy brown rice, and then asking them, you know, what do they think of when they think of brown rice? Because that person is not thinking about buying brown rice right then. And it turns out that um, the language in people's head when you ask them to talk about something, when they're kind of sort of thinking about it, as opposed to when they're proactively ready to buy, is totally different. And, and so if you get buying language, which you get by surveying people at the point of purchase or online right after they come off a pay-per-click ad, um, surveying or interviewing them, you get buying language and then you isolate the most hyper-responsive people and it turns out that hyper-responsive people leave dramatic clues in surveys and forums and blogs and, and all over the place online. We'll talk about how to get that. If, if you get the hyper-responsive buying language, then you're most likely to immediately appeal to someone like Sharon so that she knows um, this is the point of difference benefit that she wants. Fabulous. Got it? Mm -hmm. Got it? Okay. And? The last thing is that different media have different levels of hyper-responsive buyers in them. So this is why it's so important to have a very focused, when we're talking about pay-per-click search marketing, this is why it's so important to have a very focused geography, that's a keyword geography that you market to. You really need to have a keyword center and a set of related keywords that you know you are going after um, so, so, so that you can estimate across all those keywords what percent of hyper-responsives you're going to find in each one. And they, they leave clues in, in, um, in, in how verbose they are in the surveys and how passionate they are in the surveys and their willingness to leave you their phone numbers in the survey because they'll they would like to talk to anybody. You could tell them more about the market. There's clues all over the place. And if you test this keyword by keyword by keyword, you can start to, and since you know how much every keyword is going to cost you per click, um, you'll be able to start estimating the cost per lead and the cost per survey. Um, 
cost per lead and the lead cost per sale um, to acquire a hyper-responsive buyer. So before you construct all of these marketing messages, you can actually evaluate your, uh, your keyword groups and, and even offline media for hyper-responsivity. So I have come to believe, for these five reasons, I've come to believe that um, everything in marketing really boils down to identifying hyper-responsive customers, finding out what they want, talking to them in their emotional buying language, and, and estimating, your, um, estimating your, your cost beforehand. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay. Dr. Glenn Livingston with PaperClickSearchMarketing.com. Please come to the blog and let me know what you think. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate the button.